Today's video features a paid partnership with MyHeritage. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So this is just a tiny wee little video about some books that I thought I'd like to discuss with you because there's a lot of self-help bo books out there and some of them are more effective and profound than others, let's call it as it is. However, the books that have been the most influential in my life and have changed the way that I read and think and behave were never actually <laughs> marketed as self-help books. I don't think they ever would be. You see, these books were transformative for me in my 20s and I've actually yet to come across books in my 30s that have impacted me as much as these did. They transformed the way that I understand the world around me, how I analyse concepts, understand my relationships with those with me and, you know, past and present and my own mental health in times of extreme crisis. So I thought it'd be fun to share with you the five books that I would recommend people read if they want something that challenges their mindset and how it impacts them afterwards. The first one is The Republic by Plato. Now I distinctly remember the moment this book completely changed how I saw myself and the world around me. So having never read any ancient texts before, or having ever read philosophy before for that matter, I was terrified of confronting this book. I didn't believe that I had the intelligence to understand such a monumental western canonical text, um, but two things shocked me. The first was how easy and accessible this text is to read. If you are scared of ancient texts, do not be. This is very simplistic. There's no hard language and vocabulary that you see in modern philosophy books, trust me. And the second was realising how ignorant and uncurious I'd been about the world my entire life. You know, up until the age of 19 when I actually read this book, I'd absorbed everything I'd ever been told without a second thought. I never even once questioned anything. You know, what was truth? What it really meant? How certain things worked? Like, what were clouds? Like, I never considered anything. I'd just taken life as it was. And I never even looked into explanations or been curious about anything from what constituted art to morality and democracy or science. Nothing. I just kind of stuck to what school taught me and never thought beyond that. But Socratic questioning opened my eyes to how passive that I'd been taking in information uh, growing up and it introduced me to the art of deepening my understanding of every item, concept or thought I ever came into contact with. I credit the method of Socratic questioning with being fundamental to my eating disorder recovery if I'm being honest and my ability now today to be critical in academic research and identify holes in my reasoning much faster. And what's more, Socratic dialogue is really easy to access. Despite its intimidating reputation, the book is a quick and easy read, even enough for a dyslexic such as myself, so <laughs> with no background in philosophy or ancient history. So it's a really easy introduction. I think it's one of the most poignant texts that you can read from the ancient canon, Western canon, that is. Hello, it's a random interjection from Trinza. That could only mean one thing. We're going to be talking about today's paid partnership, which is my heritage. So little known thing about me that I don't really discuss online is that actually I am estranged from my parents. Um, I only have contact with a handful of family members but thanks to services like today's partner MyHeritage I have the ability to match with relatives that I never knew I had all around the world. You see when I submitted my DNA sample last year um, I found out that I'm almost 80% Irish which is insane and with MyHeritage's DNA matching feature I was given a huge list of names of people who shared genetic sequences indicating that they were possible family members of mine. The vast majority as you can imagine were actually located in Ireland particularly Dublin basically nearly everyone is in Dublin but I also had a lot of relatives based in America, evidently from some of my Irish ancestors who emigrated over there. When you test your DNA with MyHeritage DNA, you're eligible to receive DNA matches with others who have tested with MyHeritage as well as people who have tested with other services. This can help you build and expand upon your family tree, which you can create on MyHeritage. You can add your names and stories of relatives and photos of them, and then you can also exchange stories with the relatives that you meet online. Additionally, MyHeritage holds a strong commitment to their users' privacy. They never sell or license your genetic DNA, and you remain the sole owner of your DNA data. So if you're curious about discovering your ancestry or making DNA matches around the world, then you can buy your DNA kit using the link in the description box down below and use the coupon code LADY2 for free shipping. And as an added bonus for using my link, you can start a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription for family history research and enjoy a 50% discount if you decide to continue using it. 
The next book I would recommend is Sister Outsider by Audrey Lord. Lord is one of the most majestic and phenomenally intelligent writers of all time. Lord's writing is some of the most powerful soul catching that you will ever read. And I recommend Sister Outsider in particular for its accessibility and scope for those treading new waters into reading socio-political essays regarding, you know, conventionally, particularly uh, covering really exceptionally dark topics such as classism, racism, homophobia, police brutality and ageism. The way Lord brings together poetry and theory, emotions and intellectualism, hate and hope is utterly sublime. Her move away from what she calls, you know, the chaos of knowledge to connect with the body that we inhabit is so inspiring in today's harrowing and boisterous new age. She challenges the reader to listen to the voices within themselves and articulate what they are trying to teach us, you know, abstract from the noises of society and cultures and external opinions. And she encourages us to develop our own theories and implement those into our lives and live accordingly. Reading Lord is a wholly unique reading experience. When I finished the book, I was really sad that I had to like let go of the hand of the woman I felt was clutching mine throughout the entire book. Her writing is so personal and so tangible that it feels like she is there alongside you the entire time and not many writers can make you feel like that. Lord is not just a writer but an experience that you can't deny yourself if you love reading. So that is why I recommend Lord not just for the topics that she covers but the experience you get from reading her work because she feels like she's there with you. Okay, the next one's a little bit <laughs> brutal for many reasons, but it is Being in Time by Martin Heidegger. If there's one challenging philosophy text that I want you to try and commit to surmounting, Being in Time is the one that I think is worth pulling your hair out over. Sorry, can't, but I'll never forgive you for your poor writing. Though, don't get me wrong, Heidegger is only marginally better than him. This almost impenetrable text, let's call it as it is, explores the question of what it is to be. But it, it has influenced contemporary art, literature, society and political theory, psychotherapy, theology and psychiatry. That's how important this book is. And in my opinion, the text is so intriguing and worth the struggle because of the impact it has had on so many facets of your life that you're not even aware of until you start reading it. And also in terms of philosophy, it's fascinating as well because Heidegger's radical approach to philosophy does away with all traditional philosophical terms, you know, choosing instead to invent his own vocabulary as he explores the temporality of human experience and existence between birth and death. And he is so hugely influential in postmodernists uh, and people's radical change in the views of ontology that, again, when you're reading this, you see so much of today's society and literature and culture reflect. You can see where it came from. You can see how he triggered it. Now, if you're scared of reading it because of the Nazi ideals that he later expressed quite openly, you won't find nods to his Nazism in this book. And ironically, it, it, for me, when I was reading it, it was so weird because his later Nazism deeply contradicted many of the ideas that he expresses in Being in Time. You know, it's deeply hypocritical if you believe this and then went to Nazism because they're kind of almost two opposite ends of the pole. But when you're reading Being in Time, it's about his, you know, his radical at the time approach to selfhood and language and emotion and reason and philosophy that's so incredibly profound. And whilst I don't agree with all his conclusions, as a work of literature, it's exhilarating to read and almost inspiring when someone is so radically against a system in which he is writing. It's inspiring in of itself to do it in, in your genre, whatever that may be. The next one I spoke about many years ago, but it's a fiction work. It's called The Colourless Sukuro Tazaki by Haruki Murakami. And this very under-discussed book by Murakami uh, will speak to the soul of any reader who has ever experienced mental health issues as a result of social isolation and ostracisation. The protagonist of the novel, Tazaki, finds himself reflecting later in life as to all the possible reasons why he was shunned from his social group. And what unfolds in this book is a tragic tapestry explaining how one person's trauma and subsequent mental health issues can have a knock-on effect and impact the mental health of others. 
This novel showcases the complexity of human interactions and demonstrates how important it is to never personalise how other people treat us and respond to us, as most of the time we are but a collateral damage of someone else's unspoken pain and suffering. Whilst Murakami is not exactly the greatest at writing, you know, female characters and things like that, this book is quite unique in how it explores how mental health has a domino effect. And if you have ever experienced anything like that, it's actually quite comforting, so highly recommend. The last one I'm going to recommend is Between Past and Future, Eight Exercises in Political Thought by Hannah Arendt. I can never pronounce her surname correctly, so I'm going to call her Hannah. Apologies, I don't want to be disrespectful, but also I can't say her surname correctly. <laughs> so, what is history and how do we fit in it? If you're a lover of reflecting upon our place within the monumentally incomprehensible timeline of this universe and our relationship with historical events and figures and literature, then this book will feed every inch of your curiosity, provided that you have the patience to deal with the typical philosopher writing featuring excessively long sentences crammed into words that you have to repeatedly look up in a dictionary. Hannah's exploration of history and our comparative relevance helps put the reader and their life and concerns into perspective. From trivial anxieties about your relationship with the news to world events and global warming. This book gives you the essential skills in analysing contemporary crisis in relation to history, political affairs and social cultural evolution. Which seems more poignant than ever right now with what everything happening in the news all the time and our relationship with internalising everything that's happening on this huge culture that's always imposing upon itself upon us and how we as a mere human within this fragment of experience relate to everything and how we internalize it and our anxieties surrounding it it's just so important to have the skills and tools to see ourselves within a timeline and put things into perspective about what truly matters to us and what we're allowing ourselves to be eaten up alive with so that's why i recommend her book although it's brutal. <laughs> like, brutally hard to read and it's a slog. Um, if you're a history lover, which you probably are if you watch this channel, then I think you'll really enjoy it. So what are the top books that you would say have changed the way you think and read uh, that you've ever read that aren't necessarily self-help books? I'd love to hear some recommendations in the comments down below, so please share them with me. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing and sending any requests in the description Google box form down below in the thinking bob. I hope you are happy and healthy and remember, books save lives, so keep reading.